Today we take a look at the Cold Steel Trench Hawk versus the Cold Steel War Hawk. Well, hey folks, welcome to another episode here at Gideon's Tactical. I'm your host, Aaron, and yes, that is what we are doing today. We're gonna take a look at two budget-friendly tomahawks from cold steel that are definitely combat oriented we're going to use them in a lot of different tasks today not only out in the woods but also try and simulate some breaching and some different things like that just to see how these perform but very similar in a lot of ways you may even have a hard time telling the difference when you look on amazon or blade hq we're going to have links in the description below if you guys are interested for about 40 dollars, you can pick up either one of these guys for drop forge 1055 steel very doable for around that price point uh, polypropylene handles that are replaceable, really nice polymer sheaths. Uh, so there's a lot going for these. We'll have links again, Blade HQ, Amazon below. Don't forget around about our knock around sunglass links as well. If you're looking for awesome but inexpensive sunglasses, those are another simple way that you can not only support the channel, but get hooked up with some sick gear and make yourself styling regardless if you're out in the woods or on the beach. So check those out as well. But uh, Cold Steel did send these over to me so I could test out in review and give you guys full, honest, comprehensive videos uh, like this one and give you guys my feedback on this particular design, pros and cons, and all the things I like and do not like. But we're gonna throw these head to head, see which one is better for certain tasks and which one will be better suited for your needs and your desires. So guys, let's go ahead, jump to it, and see what these two tomahawks can do. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the business end of these two hawks here. A uh, lot going on. Now, uh, these are made in Taiwan. They are made out of 1055 steel, which is a good, decent, high carbon steel for the price. Uh, and I've used it on several cold steel tools and it's very easy to resharpen and they do a pretty decent heat treat. Um, you know, it's budget. You're gonna see that in a lot of budget friendly, you know, even USA made uh, hatchets and, to and tomahawks and that type of thing, um, which means that it's very shock resistant. So you're, it's very good with all the torquing. I did lots of torquing torquing on purpose to see if these would either loosen up on the handle or damage the heads. None of that, so very good against shock. Uh, and surprisingly, um held up their edges pretty well now both of these guys i have not tuned up since the testing that we originally saw um and if i can get them to focus on the face here you can see there's just a little bit of nicking um and that's because you know they're missing trees and bouncing off of rocks and doing all that stuff but was very impressed with the overall edge retention and prior to that i didn't have any sort of chipping or rolling on these with all the woods work that I was doing. Um, and the nice thing about, you know, 1055, it's super easy to resharpen. So out in the field, whereas some other tools out there, you know, like tomahawks and hatches that if you, you know, miss strike and you hit the ground or you hit a rock or, you know, you're throwing it uh, for some fun and then you got to go, you know, rework the edge, uh, you know, it can suck because you got to spend an hour trying to rework the edge because it's a, a different, harder steel. Um, so yeah, I mean, these are not 5160, they're not, you know, CR 80 CRV or something like that. Um, so they, you're going to have to, you know, resharpen them rather frequently, but you're going to be able to get a razor edge on these very easily, which is a major plus. And they're not going to like chunk out and chip out on you. They're just going to get little tight types of rolls that are much easier to work with. These did come with razor sharp edges. I had to do zero prep on these blades. That's another big plus. A lot of hatchets and tomahawks just come so dull out of the box that you have to work on them immediately anyway not the case on these great grinds great edges really done well now um, what I found was with mostly woodscraft because again uh, this is not the zombie apocalypse and I don't have you know uh, uh, that type of hand-to-hand -hand combat to test uh, so I did most of my testing for woods and you know thinking in that in that line or just as a general purpose tool um, these have quarter inch thick heads and I was really surprised I thought the whole time because of weight balance I did not weigh these ahead of time that the trench hawk was a little bit lighter and the war hawk was a little bit heavier but I found that the war hawk actually comes in at one pound 13 ounces and the trench hawk comes in at one pound 14 ounces I was really surprised with that I even as I was filming some of this stuff I uh, you may see that once or twice that I say that the warhawk is heavier it is not but it's lighter by an ounce 
mounts, but it's got to be with the weight distribution on the heads because the heads are obviously different. Um, it just might, makes it feel heavier in the head and just how they did it. So um, what I found was when I did all of our Woodscraft and, and these guys bite in really well, again, quarter inch thick heads, you're not going to really do a lot of splitting with these. They're not designed to do that, but you know, chopping, hacking, um, you know, making spears, uh, all that type of stuff. These things bite in deep and remove the, the meat of the wood very easily, which is great. So for general hacking and chopping uh, for, you know, whatever they, these are around $40 or less, these, they, they do really well. Um, and perform really well in that capacity, you know, making um, just light hacking moves and then even uh, feather stick making, carving, um, that type of thing, really ma maneuverable for their weights um, and very doable in those type of tasks as well. So I was happy with the woods craft and then even with some breaching stuff that we did, um, you know, th this would bite into a, a door, then be able to, you know, wrench and, you know, crank on it. You're not gonna worry about breaking the handles, loosening up the heads or damaging the head in any way. And then boom, you're able to get through that door uh, if need be so for that breaching tool capacity um, and then obviously the way the blades and the spikes are designed you know for combat if need be now what I found was with the head on, on the trench hawk because these both have three and a half inch um, cutting edges and then they're eight and a half inches from edge to spike now this one has kind of more of uh, flat and then flare up and then cut down and then more of like an arrowhead type of spike back here and then the Warhawk has more of just a consistent angle the entire time with a larger beard coming down and then more of like a fireman spike sweeping out the back there. The spikes are not sharp, but they do have those edges ground in just to help with uh, that. And so what I found was for general utility, I think the Warhawk just performed a little bit better again because I think of the blade balance. It seemed to chop a little bit better on the wood and the spike is better for um, just getting into the wood because of that hook kind of. Uh, regardless if you're going through a door, you know, a piece of plywood, you know, whatever it is, um, or digging, you know, um, trenching, whatever it would be, I feel like it, it just is better set up for that. And I just saw a little bit better success in the outdoors, I guess, than I did on the trench hawk. Whereas on the trench hawk, um, the it did very good. I mean, don't get me wrong, but the spike is definitely more designed as literally like a lethal instrument, like swing, you know penetration um, it could tear open a door but it just doesn't have the angle that this one does again more like a fireman is what I'm thinking uh, to be able to pry and and you know wrench on and open up stuff that this one is designed just to penetrate pure penetration there um, not a lot of you know leverage to pull and crank on in that way so I would argue that um, from all my experience and what I found is that the trench hawk is more of that actual like combat weapon and the warhawk is actually more of that like breaching or general purpose tool. Um, absolutely, you could use both of them in a combat scenario, but that's kind of where I found that these two guys fall in in their usage. Now for the price, uh, I was really impressed with the sheath options that are kind of come on the Warhawk or the Trench Hawk. They're the exact same style and design. They do not have any sort of belt attachment, but they do a great job of really covering up not only the spike, but the blade rather well. So it's a polymer, uh, kind of like their Secure X. It is their Secure X uh, material. And you got lots of holes, so you could run different, you know, lashing points through there if you wanted to. But there's nothing along the top. You, it would be best just to get some sort of either belt loop, you know, that you could ride and just kind of drop the handle through or some sort of sling that you yourself come up with. It does have two Phillips heads here um, on the joints. And so how this works is with this nylon strap right there. You pull that, it swings open like a door kind of, and you just completely remove the sheath. And then when it's time to put it back on, you do spike first, and this will be for the trench hawk or the war hawk. Spike first, and then you just lay it across and snap it back up. So it absolutely does its job. It does its job well. It's not super loud. It doesn't rattle around. All right, we'll hit the handle here. Now it's a polymer, uh, like polypropylene material. The awesome thing is you can purchase aftermarket replaceable ones for about $5. So if you invest in one of these, I would recommend picking up another handle. So you just never have to worry about brutalizing the heck out of this thing. You know, apocalyptic scenario, whatever the situation may be, you can just unscrew the head and mount the next 
uh, handle on. Now, I have seen great um, flexibility and durability out of these when we were doing a lot of the stabbing uh, with the spikes and then torquing on the handles. The handles would absolutely flex. You would see them bend to one side or the other, you know, maybe about an inch uh, overall, but you uh, um, knew that they, they, they didn't have any sort of feeling of cracking. They felt very durable, very heavy duty, lots of throwing at trees just to see if anything with the handles would have an issue at all. And I'm seeing that they are holding up really well. Now, the nice thing is that from the top of the head here all the way to the bottom, we're looking at about 19 inches overall handle length, about 18, you know, on just this part right here to the end. Now they are screwed on to the head with two large bolts that have recesses on the other end here. Really, again, done well because I'm not seeing any loosening up with really hard abuse on purpose. I've been purposely trying to get these to loosen up and back out and they will not do so. So um, they are just Allen head, you know, uh, um, screws so very easy to replace and you know pull out if you ever did have a loosening or you just needed to replace the handle because of some damage someone you know drove over it you know it was torqued on a, a rock or something weird uh, while somebody hit it with an ATV or something like that uh, then you could easily back it out and actually still use the head because it still has enough of a handle here you could do some minor little like stuff if you had to if you didn't have a spare handle otherwise you could fashion one or again replace one now they have three different color combinations with the handle sheath combos brown black and green we have black and green here on both of these they are the exact same handle for both models very straight off the back uh, and then have just a little bit of a bell here as you can see that flare out with that lanyard so it stays in your hand rather nicely particularly if you do the lanyard for you know regardless for using it more of like a woods tool or you know like a more combat tool breaching whatever it's going to stay in your hand absorb most of the shock it wasn't ab abrasive in the shocking at all you know when i'm chopping and stuff so th they really uh, done a good job with the balance and just overall strength and contouring of these handles and giving you a longer handle than most other machete or excuse me than most other tomahawks and so that is a nice thing that we see with this design is with that 19 inch handle, a lot of uh, tomahawks are gonna be more around like 12 to 13 inches. So this is gonna give you not only a lot more reach, but also a lot more inertia to use as a breaching tool or as an outdoor woods tool. Now we could argue it could possibly be a hindrance with a combat situation uh, if you're using it hand to hand, but uh, that's something that you'll have to weigh the odds. And then the final thing that I just wanna hit with the neck, they do have some hand cut-ins here that work really nicely, just some grooves. So if you are choking really far up to do like feather sticks and you know, um, just really fine cutting with the tool if you needed to do that or just hold it in a closer, you know, you're in really close quarters and you're, you are using it in a combat situation, uh, you do have a really nice grip. I just really like that contouring that they did right over here. Feels very nice in the hand and very controllable for how large and heavy these tomahawks are. So one last thing I just wanna hit on with these handles is that they do have kind of a skin texture to them with that little bell to help keep it in the hand, but they are rather slick. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to do a lanyard, you know, do that reverse thumb grip, and ultimately you take it to the next level, probably wrap it with um, some form of like hockey tape or something like that down near the handle here where you would grip it just to give you a little extra traction. Well guys, I'll wrap it up by sharing these final thoughts with you here about these two Tomahawks. Very impressive for the price point. Uh, now again, these are designed for combat. Um, so they are not the most ideal woods craft tools, but they're kind of a general purpose tool. I call them like a survival tomahawk maybe, you know, that you could absolutely use them to defend yourself if you needed to, zombie apocalypse, end of the world, or if you're just out on a camping trip and you're not really needing to split logs, but you're wanting to chop and just use them for a lot of different tasks and just have some fun throwing them and hucking them at trees. Uh, they're gonna be tough, durable, replaceable handles that are really inexpensive and you don't have to break the bank. You're not dropping and you know, $400 on an, on an RMJ Tomahawk. Of course, they're probably worth $400, but that's a freaking ton of money. So I hope that guys, these videos, this video in particular has helped you out decide which one, the Trench Hawk or the War Hawk is the right Tomahawk, lots of Hawk Hawks, Hawkity Hawk Hawk for you. Uh, and just that these videos give you guys good content to help you make those wise decisions. That's what I always wanna do here, guys, when we do these videos, helping you decide, hmm, 
yeah, that's the one I want, or no, I don't need either of these. That's what we always wanna do here at the channel. Please subscribe if you're not a current subscriber. We're throwing up videos like this every single week. You current subscribers rock. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, uh, social media in general. Just got tons of stuff going up there all the time. Don't forget about the mailbag. Uh, if you wanna get involved in the conversation, you might get one of your questions answered in an upcoming video just in the, descri or in the comments below. Put hashtag mailbag and then ask your question you may see it answered in an upcoming video. And finally, guys, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. Oh, we'll see you out there.